Hello, everybody. Thank you for the opportunity to let me share my story. I know most of you know who I am, um, but for those that don't, my name is Jennifer Diamond, and I'm going to be using some cards to keep on track. Um, we have some slides to share, and um, if you have any questions at the end, I'll be happy to, to answer anything. So I live a whole food, plant-exclusive, sofas-free, gluten-free lifestyle for health and well-being. Sofas is salt, oil, flour, alcohol, sugar-free, gluten-free. But it wasn't always the way that I ate. In my childhood, um, we ate the standard American diet. And um, it was a lot of fast food, my favorite nacho cheese Doritos. Um, we had Lari seasoned salt in our potatoes at home with milk and butter. Um, and my mom was always asking, steak or chicken, steak or chicken, steak or chicken. In fact, I thought that was the only meats that there were, you know. We had, I had eggs, yogurt, ice cream, milk, candy. I mean, just basically all the, the foods that we eat. Um, I was also considered a really picky eater. My grandparents, I remember, uh, had like a big holiday party and I would just go to the black olives that were pitted and put them on each one of my fingers. Who didn't? Right? <laughs> Who didn't? And so I had, you know, fancy nails that I would eat, and that was all I would eat. And my grandfather also had said, you know, don't ask her what she wants to eat because she doesn't really eat anything. We'll just, we'll get her a big bag of bird seed because, <laughs> you know, and so those are some of my memories. Um, but early in my childhood, I also experienced a lot of inflammation. And I didn't know it until I started looking back. Um, I had allergies to foods and environment, uh, environmental allergies. I had really a lot of stress um, for a child. I came from um, a, a parents that had a horrific, tumultuous relationship. Um, and it wasn't until much in my adulthood that I realized my father was diagnosed with bipolar, which explained some things. But there was a lot of stress. There was kidnappings involved by both parents. I was taken across state lines. Just a lot of, a lot of craziness. Um, and so when I got to be a teenager, I decided, you know, I want to have a family of my own. And I want to raise them and do things the way that I wished it was done for me. And uh, <laughs> so in, in trying to have a family, I, I met somebody and we were, we were considering trying to have a, a family and I found out that I had um, an ovarian tumor cyst. Um, I was told that it was the size of an egg. They were gonna have to remove both my ovaries. My dream of a family was over. And my father was a medical doctor practicing, believe it or not. Um, and he had some friends um, that were uh, good surgeons, actually one of the best surgeons in the country at the time for this type of problem. And so I flew um, across the state to Illinois where he was and I had the ovarian uh, tumor cyst removed. And it was not the size of an egg, but the size of a grapefruit. Uh, they told me that I shouldn't have flown. Um, the turbulence could have ruptured and, it, you know, could have killed me. Um, but, you know, when I was finished with that uh, recovery, um, I was able to start to have kids. But, you know, the funny thing is about this whole thing, no one ever spoke about food. There was never anyone that talked about like how my diet may or may not have affected any of these types of things. Um, even in the hospital, they served me, you know, the standard American diet. And so nobody knew anything different. Um, of course, I was blessed with three children and a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there they are when they were kids. Um, after my oldest daughter was born, I was diagnosed with a thyroid disorder. And I was told, don't worry, it's a lifelong problem you can never get rid of. You, you'll just take this little tiny pill for the rest of your life. And I still, unfortunately, am on thyroid medication. Um, between the second child and the third child, uh, they found a nodule on my thyroid, which is like a growth of some sort. And they watched that um, for many, many, many years. And again, 
No one talked about food. Could food be, you know, any indication of why I'm having these weird growths all the time? No one, no one saw food um, as a problem, or no, no one ever mentioned it to me. Um, so I was always really into fitness. I danced as a little girl, and um, I did cheerleading for a short period of time in high school, but I was like the troublemaker cheerleader, so it didn't last very long. Um, I did aerobics classes as an adult, weightlifting. I got really into kickboxing, and I could say that I could kickbox my way, kickbox my way into being fit. I didn't have to watch my weight. I could eat whatever I wanted as long as I sweat enough, I could do it. And so that's how I stayed trim. Um, and then I came across someone named Susan Powder. I don't know oh, if anybody hey. know who Susan Powder is. <laughs> yeah, she was um, this woman that uh, at one point, I think she was around 400 pounds and she had lost hundreds of pounds and she was this little feisty lady and um, she wrote a book and I started to follow her and do what she was recommending, which was basically a low carb diet. And I, I went from, um, you know, Doritos to tortilla chips. And I was doing great. That was my improvement. You know, and <laughs> yeah, and I, I stopped eating pasta, you know. Um, and so this was about 1995. This is actually when Todd and I met. Um, I was not eating red meat at this time. I had already given it up. I remember uh, people asking me, why? Why don't you eat red meat? And it was because it gave me stomach aches. I don't know if that's really why or what the reason was, because I can't remember, but um, we parted as friends uh, at this time um, after dating for a while just because we, we needed to do different things. Um, so meanwhile, I was dealing with all kinds of other issues. I um, had cystic acne. I was treated with something called Accutane. They say it's a medication you should only take once in your life. And while you're on it, you better have your blood tested because it can cause all kinds of problems with kidney or I think it's kidney and not liver. And so um, my doctor had, I took it because I trusted my doctor. And a few years later, it all came back. And he recommended that once in a lifetime medication to me again. And I took it again because I trusted him. I was dealing with sinus infections. I was on medications, um, steroids, nasal sprays. I took Singular, I took antibiotics. And eventually I, um, had my first of three sinus surgeries. Um, still, food was never mentioned, like never mentioned by the ER doctor, my primary care doctor, specialist, any of my surgeons. And um, this was about 1997 when I had um, my nodule. I had another tumor in my finger. I had, um, a, and they found a tumor in my breast as well. Um, and during this time, I mean, some of these other things are things that my kids had also. So as a single parent dealing with my own health stuff, not knowing that food could be a, an issue at the time, we as a family dealt with all these other things as well. Um, and, you know, just always kind of went back to what the doctor says because, I mean, that's, what, that's how I was raised, to believe that the doctor knows and we should trust them. Um, every month during my cycle, I would end up with an infection. And if I didn't stop working out for three to four days, um, I would be on medications for the month, for at least two weeks. And I mean, I just didn't understand why no one else was having that issue. Um, but I, I was, and so I just, you know, kind of went with it and tried not to get the infection. Um, then I came across a movie called Super Size Me. <laughs> and that was the first time I had ever heard that there was something wrong with fast food. I immediately stopped eating all fast food. My children, I did not bring them along on that. I kind of let them do their thing, but I stopped personally buying it for myself and for them. But, you know, sometimes if they were out. Uh, that was a different story. Um, and you know, I ate healthy. I, I had uh, boneless chicken breast. I had fruit. I ate salads, small little ones in a bowl on the side. Um, eggs, bacon, 
Um, bagels and cream cheese, that was really great for me. And, and, and just regular cheese, it was all good. Um, and then, you know, there were other factors in my life that I question. Um, like the Santa Susana Field Laboratory, it was a federally funded study around radioactive and nuclear uh, energy, and the contaminants were dumped into the water table and the soil in the area that I lived for 30 years, and nobody knew at the time. And I always wondered, could this have played a part in any of my growths? I lost a lot of friends uh, to unusual cancers and, and weird weird things that also lived, uh, lived in that area. Um, I reconnected with the man of my dreams <laughs> in 2006, and um, he was living in Boston at the time, and I was in uh, Southern California, and we were going to go to Northern California and, and start a family you know, connection together again. Um, and so I went to Northern California to meet him. Um, so that we could start looking for a home. I flew there by myself, and while I was there, I was so sick. I had the worst sinus infection. Um, when I swallowed, my ears would plug. It was just, it was horrific, and I, I could not look for a place. I could not fly home. I couldn't do anything. So I ended up getting a bottle of Afrin, and um, I, I had to rent a car and slowly drive uh, home. A very hilly area, and so when I would go down, I would have to make sure that the pressure wasn't causing problems. So, eventually, this is taken after we were um, we had finally moved there, and um, at this point, we were in our house, and we were I was starting to grow stuff in pots, right? So I'm I'm growing. Uh, bell peppers and tomatoes and different things. We started going to the farmer's market together um, and eating fish and um, all kinds of things that were good. And you know what? I was still getting sick. Um, so I saw an infectious disease specialist, and he, he found out that I had some parasites. He treated that. And um, I, I had my first bone density scan, and it showed I had osteoporosis at age 40. Uh, they put me on Fosomax for five years. I did it because the doctor knows best. Um, and eventually, we moved to Arizona in 2010, which we're, we're still here now. And I continued having sinus problems, allergy problems. Um, I ate, at this point, salads, salmon, fruit, um, oatmeal, artisan cheese, and um, breads. We drank wine the finest on occasion, mm -hmm. all healthy foods at that time. So I was taking a lot of medications. I was taking a nasal nebulizer two times a day, uh, Fosomax still. I was on uh, multivitamins, Caltrate uh, for bones, fish oil, prescriptions of high dosages of Leviquin, 500 milligrams, Augmentin, 875, and 1,000, up to four times a day. Um, I was always just always on medication. Um, I finally had a CT scan with contrast. Uh, it was ordered of my sinuses because I was consistently having all of the sinus issues, and it started. It showed complete air blockage and mucosal thickening in several of the cavities. So it should all be white, and so this is not white. Uh, this should all be white. This should all be white, <laughs> and e and even up here, this area, right? Yes. This area yes. should and be. That, that should be black. Yes, the black shows air. Thank you so much, and. And so I was suffering um, quite severely at the time. Um, I was also diagnosed with chronic fungal sinusitis. It is an allergy to a bacteria in our air that we breathe. So um, I ended up having the third sinus surgery. Uh, it was necessary after the scan. And one of the, the scans at the time uh, showed something in the corner of the scan. I don't have, have it to share right now, um, but it was something in my pituitary gland. Uh, they thought that it might be some kind of a tumor. Um, the pituitary gland is a small gland about the size of a pea. It sits in the middle of between your eyes, in the center of the head, between uh, the eyes, at the base of the brain. It has a huge job. 
It um, does everything for our hormones uh, in, in terms of um, fluctuation and, and, and making sure the hormones are stable, all these kinds of things. And so um, they, found, they found this and they, they called it a pituitary microadenoma. It was found in the corner of my scan and after my sinus surgery, the third one, um, they said you have to have allergy shots um, and you need these. Um, and I had actually had allergy shots as a kid. I started at age five. Um, and so I've ha I had them on and off for 40 years. Um, but at this time, I had them for six years. This lasted six years. And they said, this is what is going to keep the fungal sinusitis away, which they said was the cause of some of that. Um, and so during the time that I had the allergy shots, I went into anaphylactic shock. <laughs> Nobody's talking about food. Nobody's talking about infl inflammatory foods or anything like that, but just all of these things that cause all these side effects. Effects, and I kept having them. Um, so <laughs> my otolaryngologist, which is a fancy name for the ENT surgeon, uh, said to me from the Mayo Clinic, um, I just want you to know that I use your case. Your case is so severe, I use it to teach other otolaryngologists at my conferences. Oh, uh, and I was like, I mean, I thought, is that a exactly, <laughs> exactly. I thought exactly that. And I actually asked her and she giggled and I thought, oh dear. Okay. So, um, never said anything about food. Nobody, nothing. I had no idea. So they said, you know what? We're going to monitor the pituitary. We're going to do these MRIs every six months and our machines and our scans are so fancy that we pick up stuff, you know, people, uh, there's tons of people in the world that are walking around with this. They don't even know it. It doesn't do anything. It's not a big deal. Mine grew. Mine grew. Ooh. And a few years later, I was advised uh, to have it removed. Uh, it was pushing on the optic nerve and it couldn't impair my vision. It could cause tunnel vision, peripheral double vision, uh, effects of the neurological system, bladder control, the hormones, like you had mentioned. Um, and so it was removed um, with two teams of doctors. Um, during that surgery, I did have a small spinal fluid leak. Um, it was fixed by graft of muscle tissue from my thigh. And when the pituitary, this tiny little thing in your head, it's surrounded by bone, so they had to cut bone. And so in order to repair that, um, they used some fat from my leg to re, you know, shape it and, and enclose it. Um, wow. So no uh, scuba diving for me. Um, yeah, I could snorkel though. Um, I was in the critical care unit for five days and um, Todd was right there by my side. Uh, poor guy on day four, I think he said he really wanted to change his shoes and I mean change his socks and wash his feet. Uh, <laughs> true story. Um, <laughs> so over the years, I also had things like low white blood count. I had low potassium. Um, I saw a naturopath which uh, was, I believe, the cause of the original low potassium. Um, she had me on a very strict diet, and um, I don't believe that I was eating enough of certain things. And so I ended up having really severe heart palpitations, and I thought I was having a heart attack. I went into the ER. They did my blood. They said, you have low potassium. Um, and so <laughs> I... Uh, I ended up seeing a doctor who deals with that, and um, they said, we want you to drink Gatorade. Oh, oh. And I said, right? I said, I cannot drink Gatorade. Have you seen what's in Gatorade? And so we agreed, OK, how about coconut water? It's high in potassium. And I said, OK. And so I drank 16 ounces of coconut water a day for nine years, wow. nine years. In search of better health, I found the paleo diet. <laughs> I was on to something. Um, and what happened? I said to my family, you know what? I got to do something. I got to take control. And I found this new paleo diet. We can eat all of the bacon and meat and, you know, all of this butter and ghee and just everything. Does anyone want to do this with me? And they all said, yeah. <laughs> We do. We want to do this with you. And so uh, we all did the paleo diet. And then I realized, huh, I'm putting on a lot of weight. Um, my acne is back. My cholesterol is elevated. I felt sluggish. And um, 
maybe this isn't really working out. So my, I'll just let that go by. So my oldest daughter, you know, is also in search at the same time for trying to find something that would be really good um, that we have control of. And she said, mom, I found this, this thing you might be interested in, it's called vegan. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm gonna try it, do you wanna try it with me? So I said, you know what? I will try it with you. And again, I reached out to the family. Nobody wanted to try it with me. <laughs> surprise, surprise. I'm like, what? Nobody. Nobody wanted to try it with me except my oldest daughter. Um, and so anyways, uh, you know, I just, I wanted to try anything that I could try that would allow me to try to take control of my life um, because I was really tired of all the tumors and the growths and the surgeries and the medications. I mean, I was exhausted. And so here I am on a vegan diet and I learn about Engine 2 spaghetti sauce. My daughter came across it in the grocery store and she told me, God, this is, this is really clean. Look, no oils, no, no added sugar. I quickly went to the store, bought myself some and realized, who is making this? Who is this Engine 2? And realized, oh my gosh, who's Rip Esselstein? And I, I learned all about Rip Esselstein. I quickly got his book, The Engine 2 uh, book, The Seven Day Rescue. And um, that's where we started. Yeah, and it, 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 yes. So that, was it because of pasta sauce? No, it's <laughs> now. We just, we, I saw a, a movie. I saw a movie with yeah. him. Yeah, I saw a movie. He was yeah. a documentary. Movies. Yeah. My nephews worked for Whole Foods in Chicago, and one of them went to one of Rip's week-long things of training. Oh, cool. And his cool. comment was, that guy was up there looking at the picture of his own butt. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm grateful that he brought the product in, and it, and it made me aware. I still buy a lot of his stuff. And, yeah, yeah. so. Um, dad. Now we know his dad. Now we know his, I mean, so many of his family members are such a, a blessing to me anyways. And the warrior women. Oh, they're the, awesome. The mother and daughter. Anne sister. and Jane. Yeah. Yes, yes. His sisters, yes. And so um, at this point, after so many years, I finally said I do. <laughs> I finally said I do um, to my boyfriend of 10 years the second time. And today is our eighth wedding anniversary. Oh. We've known each other 29 years, and um, I just felt that it was really important to spend this time sharing my story with you. And so, um, happy anniversary, honey. Happy anniversary. <laughs> and so, anyways, going back to the other part of this story, um, this is where I learned about whole food plant-based. Um, Chef AJ and her book, The Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss, uh, Dr. Codwell Esselstein that you mentioned and his books, T. Colin Campbell, you know, he wrote The China Study and, and Whole, Dr. Greger, Dr. McDougall, Dr. Goldhammer, and, and so many more. I started watching documentaries um, like Forks Over Knives, Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead, and then I had to go get that juicer right away. Um, <laughs> and I just, I just was getting so into all of this, um, and I found myself after I'm all getting into this, I found myself dealing with a herniated disc. Aww. And surgery was the only thing that could repair it. So I had the surgery, I recovered, um, but this was not the end of my health issues. Unfortunately, um, evolving from uh, vegan to whole food plant-based, but I didn't know enough about it. I wasn't eating enough and it caused me to feel really weird. I remember walking the dog and nobody was around and I just felt like, what if I fall over? Is there anyone around that could help me? I just felt so odd. I ended up um, going to the emergency room and I was diagnosed as totally anemic. Um, my iron stores were three, which is like really not good. And the doctor, you know, we talked about what I ate. That was really the first time I, I kind of talked with a doctor about food. And he said, I mean, he begged me, can't you just eat an egg? <laughs> and I'm like laying in this emergency room, right, with the gown and everything. I'm like, I can't eat an egg. I just, I can't eat an egg. And, um, and so he said, you know, if you continue, you're gonna be back and you're gonna need a blood transfusion. So like you should consider eating an egg. 
anyways, um, so from there, I, I, I took it seriously, and I did hire a whole food plant-based doctor. Um, the hospital had me start on um, iron supplements. The whole food plant-based doctor switched me to a natural uh, Floridex. If anyone's familiar with this, an iron supplement made of food, and um, it doesn't have any, you know, preservatives or any of that stuff. So I was on that and it wasn't really changing things for me. So I went and saw a naturopathic medical doctor and he, he was not whole food plant-based. He was not vegan, but he had vegan patients, he said. So he was supportive in what I wanted to do. And so he said, okay, we'll stick with this. And he had me doing all kinds of supplements and we took blood work every three months and it was climbing, but it was really slow. And he said, you know, I'm going to have to add another iron supplement. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I cannot take any more supplements. What else could we do? And he said, eat meat. Mm. Eat th uh, four ounces of red meat in the diet that you have, and your iron stores will go back up. Well, I did end up eating the meat. And... I ended up going on this spiral of everything processed. I was like a lunatic in the kitchen, you know, cookies and crackers. And I mean, it just went from, just went all downhill. And, um, and then the pandemic hit. And both of my daughters, I have three children, both of my daughters became pregnant. I had two grandbabies at the time, but we were gonna be expecting two more. They were pregnant uh, five weeks apart. And um, they were both high-risk pregnancies. They were both going to have C-sections. I was going to be staying in the hospital with one of them. And at that time, you can't go in and out of the hospital. You check in, you stay, and you can't even go to the parking lot. It was all restricted. Um, and so towards the end of their pregnancies, their, uh, their doctor was pushing the vaccine and, in and encouraging them to get it. Um, and they were encouraging um, me to get it. At least they asked me to consider it. Um, and I really didn't want to get it. Um, but I didn't want to harm any little babies that were bringing in. I didn't understand. I didn't want to carry something in. And, um, and so I did choose to get the Pfizer vaccine part one and two, May and June of 2021. Uh, the, the youngest baby was born in August. And so, so that was six weeks later. Um, I was in the hospital. There he is, the littlest guy. Um, and we were in the hospital and back at her home uh, nine, nine days. So like four or five days in the hospital and the rest at home. During that time, I slept three and a half hours total in nine days. Um, and about this time that this picture, I mean, I know I look exhausted. I really was. Um, the baby was uh, having some issues. You can't tell on here, but he was having some issues with jaundice and she was having some other issues. And it was, it was just a very stressful time with the masks and all this people coming in and nobody really understood anything. And I noticed that my right big toe the left side of the top was numb. And I thought, well, maybe I laid on it wrong or, you know, I mean, I don't have time for that. I've got to, you know, help the baby and help my daughter. Um, and so I just continued. We checked out. We went to her house. And um, by the end of that ninth day, I was noticing tingling sensations on the bottom of my feet. And um, I was sleep deprived. I didn't understand why my toe was numb. And I just remember standing and holding a broom because I had been sweeping. I was the 24 hour help. I was all she had. And I just broke down. I was crying and I just said to her, I'm like, I'm so sorry. I have to go home. I, I have to go home. Something is not right. And I felt like I was abandoning my daughter, abandoning this baby. And um, I did. I drove home. I cried all the way home. And I went to bed for two months. I slept basically for two months. I got up to go to the bathroom. I got up to eat a little. I did have conversations. They were very short and limited. And I did reach out to one of the doctors who did the, the um, surgery on my herniated disc because I thought maybe something's going on. That's why my feet feel weird. Uh, so he did all kinds of, um, he did an MRI with contrast and he said, no, looks fine. Um, so I started seeing doctors. 
I saw uh, the neurosurgeon at Mayo, which I just mentioned. I saw a chiropractor. I did the TENS uh, machine. I did a massage with the masseuse. I did uh, physical therapy, occupational therapy, pain management, uh, acupuncturist. Um, I went to Barrow uh, Neurosurgery and saw their second opinion team of doctors. I um, saw a rheumatologist. I asked to go to Mayo in um, Rochester and was denied because they wanted me to see the guy that told me nothing was wrong with me. Um, I ended up seeing a total of four neurologists and um, I had spine injections, three of them. I had wrist injections. I tried everything that anyone suggested. Um, I reached out to the Cleveland Clinic. Um, they didn't have anything for nine months, and I just <laughs> can't wait nine months. I finally uh, got an appointment at Johns Hopkins, and by the time we were able to fly to Washington for that appointment, my husband had lost his job, and we did not have our insurance in place, so they would not see me. Um, the other issues that I had was my toe was still numb, uh, tingling in my feet, buzzing, bzz, 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 that kind of a sensation in the body. Um, I had this weird triangular shape that was buzzing in between the webs of my fingers. I had elbow pain, wrist pain. Um, it went up my legs if I walked. If I had any movement at all, it went up my legs in the groin area, across my face, my lips. Um, I had loss of balance. I was super weak. I couldn't even hold a pen. I couldn't pour water into a container. Um, I could just sit on a recliner with my legs up. I couldn't cross my legs. I, I couldn't sit at the table to feed myself because the motion of leaning forward to put the spoon or whatever in my mouth would cause the sensations to elevate. And um, it was quite a disaster. Some of the tests that I had were x-rays, more MRIs, because they ended up doing uh, the thoracic the lumbar they already had done, and the cervical. They did EMG tests, which measure your nerve pain. They did it in my hands and my feet. Um, they said I had carpal tunnel and told me to change my desk at work, but I don't have a desk and I don't go to work. <laughs> so um, when I told them that, they said, just change your desk at work again. Um, they had me do a tilt test. Uh, they even interviewed me for a PTSD program. Uh, because they said, you know, this might be in your head. And this might be stress, and this might be anxiety, and you know, you should consider doing this test. It will help uh, this program. It will help you learn how to manage your stress. Um, I did a DEXA scan uh, because I had been bedridden for so long, and now I am measuring uh, osteoporosis of a 96-year-old. They had me on ibuprofen originally and gabapentin, and gabapentin wasn't working, so they kept bringing up the dose. And they said, you got to give it time, you got to give it time. Uh, finally, I said, this is not working, so they switched me to Celebrix and then Lyrica. They were brain-altering medications. I couldn't speak properly, and still nothing was helping. Um, so I had a lot of weight gain. Um, and there I am <laughs> at my mom's birthday party. We celebrated her 80th birthday party at my home. And it took everything in my power to get up and be part of the family. Uh, you could see the shoes that I'm wearing. I had to have socks and cushy shoes. I couldn't walk barefoot. I'm hiding my wrist because I have a wrist brace on. Um, and I'm super heavy. And uh, after that, that took me four days of resting with my feet elevated to get the sensations to tone down. It was almost as if somebody had um, static on a TV really low. And it would go louder and louder. That was the sensation until it was so high in the body, it would break me down. I would just drop to my knees and just sob. I spent most of those days uh, sobbing day and night, day and night, day and night. I actually told my husband that although I wasn't suicide, suicidal, I, I really I didn't want to live anymore. And um, it, was, it was no picnic. So you know what I thought? I got to do something. So I started doing all these natural things that I could think of. Wim Hof's breathing techniques, where you hyperventilate, if anyone's heard of that, you kind of clean out the old air and bring in new cells. I did cold water plunges in our pool in the winter, 50 degree pool, that is cold. And um, I was in there for 10 minutes, we would time it. And I don't know why, but he got in the pool with me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he did, yeah. <laughs> I started uh, manipulating my circadian rhythm. I um, would get up and um, 
you know, watch the sunrise and I started meditation. I was drawing. Uh, we removed all electronic devices um, or unplugged them in the, in the bedroom, the TV, the computer cell. We turned off the Wi-Fi at night so that nothing would disturb anything that we could control. Um, I had blackout shades in the bedroom, air purifier, which also was a noise maker um, to help, uh, no lights. So when the sun went down, candles, we had candles. And um, that was it, no TV, no, was just trying my best because I wasn't sleeping well. Um, and who could, right? All this sensation, nonstop, nonstop, nonstop for, it was over a year. Um, I even switched out our water filtration system and got a Berkey. I got rid of fluoride in the water and in my toothpaste. Um, and then the baby, the baby that you saw, that baby's first birthday came. And after the party, which was at our home um, with all kinds of sad food, um, and I was able to sit at the couch and watch, I could not engage, um, I decided, I'm gonna have a blood test, I thought to myself, in three weeks. And I know my cholesterol is elevated and I think I'm gonna try to lower it before those three weeks. So without telling anyone in the family, I went to my cabinet and I got out my prevent and reverse heart disease um, book, my cookbook, and I started eating that way without telling anyone and three weeks later had the blood test. The blood test showed a 50% drop in my cholesterol, but more importantly, I could move my sensations were slowing down, my hips, I could move, I could stand. Um, and I couldn't believe that the food, the whole food plants that I was eating were beginning to heal me like no one told me this. And at that time that I could move, I made a little video to share with my family and I'll, I'll play it, it's like 30 seconds. Maybe I'll play it. So that was fun, and that was really uh, the beginning of, of a wonderful um, rebirthing of my, my freedom to be in my body again. Um, I went to True North. I was on a mission. I am going to heal. So I would try anything. I went to True North. There's me water fasting. I did a juice and water fast for 14 days with a seven-day refeed. Um, and over that year, I traveled everywhere and anywhere that I thought I could. Um, I was in fear of doing this alone after being in bed, but you know what? I just faced the fear and I did it and everything kept coming positive back to me. I began to wear a weighted vest. Um, I played in the playground <laughs> uh, and I just got my freedom back. You can see where I'm holding the bananas. I don't know, the other hand's holding a big thing of kale. Um, I started riding my bike, I was doing cartwheels and um, I just, focused and focused and focused. And during the time that I first started eating the food and realized that it was helping, I had a massive eruption happen in my body. I had a huge sinus infection that was treated with three different um, antibiotic uh, series. And um, I had acne, I mean, and I realized, I think the dairy is coming out of me. I mean, I really thought that. This is seeping out of me. And I had gone to the doctor, the otolaryngologist, this sinus guy, a different one, uh, not at Mayo. And you know he was treating me for this infection three times and started me with the allergist again. And I just, I ha came back for a follow-up and he said, they take a little camera and they look up in your sinuses. And he said, there is absolutely no inflammation. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> and he sat down and listened to me. I couldn't believe it. 
and he said that he had been to one of those, conf uh, I don't know if it's a conference where they, you know, talk about uh, different things, uh, speakers and stuff. And he said, you know, there was a speaker at this last one that I went to at this medical conference and he was talking about the power of food. And he said, I really believe in it. It was the first guy, he's a Western medicine guy, he's validating what I'm doing. And I said to him, why are you not telling your patients? And he said, because I'm not educated. I, I can't. So he took me off of all my medications. I do one sinus rinse a day, and it's just salt and distilled water. And I, um, I'm, I'm off of pretty much everything. I do still take the thyroid medication. Um, I'm not 100%. And um, I'm still working on it. But um, I'll tell you what I am up to right now. Um, I started a, a YouTube channel, which is trying to grow just to share with people that if you are somewhere where I was, that you don't have to be alone. Uh, it's a lonely place to be, and there are things that you can try, uh, things like food. And um, I have an Instagram that I just post pictures of food on. I'm in a certification uh, program right now to become a plant-based nutrition coach. Um, well, we'll see where that goes to. And potlucks and being with, with people like you. Um, this is what I need to do to heal and spread the word. Um, if you want to know more about me or hear some other stories, I do have some interviews on my YouTube channel. I've been interviewed by Chef AJ, uh, a beautiful lady named Michelle Sen. Um, I recently was on the Vax Unvax bus um, sharing. And so that's my story. Thank you so much. Um, if anyone has any questions, I'll be happy to, to answer them. I appreciate you taking the time to listen to uh, my journey and, and just know, you know, this is our tribe, and I, I respect everybody, and, and thank you.